All right, I think this is a heat treat. Texas chert. It's late, but I think I'm going to switch my schedule around again uh, to nap late at night. My schedule during the day is highly unpredictable, so it's hard for me to sit down and do a video. Yeah, it's a heat treat. That flake went clear across the shop. Yeah, so if I wait until evening, which was my old strategy, my dad's already in bed sleeping. Same was my old strategy back at home. All the kids and all the everybody was already pretty much settled in for the night. No interruptions during those hours late at night. So we'll see how this works. I've been doing other things this week besides flint napping. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I've been organizing my shop. It's an ongoing process. I got, I think I got 90% of it done. Yeah. So, that's it. I should be able to focus now. All right. In the upcoming weeks, should be able to focus. Now, there's supposed to be a good snowstorm tonight, which is not going to interfere with anything, except maybe travel. I won't be able to run errands. I don't think that'll interfere with the videos. Nope, nope. The snow won't last long. It's uh, it's already pretty much springtime, so the temperature warms up pretty fast. It cools down fast. We get some snow, and then it warms up fast. It all melts just as fast as it got built up it'll melt new background color yeah springtime even though for us it's still winter yeah right now it's below it's like 29 or 22 degrees out here so I got the space heater going you can hear it in the background Alright. Oh yeah, I've been harvesting or gathering shoots. A bunch of stuff. This is just sample. I kept these because these are too wonky to use for arrows. And, well, this one is. This one is damaged, so I can't use that one. But I can show what I do. This is buckthorn. Buckthorn is easy to harvest, to uh, gather where I am because it grows everywhere and it's also an invasive species so no one cares if I cut it and I also got some viburnum today yeah that was a little bit more difficult to get because you gotta you got to go down by the water it's all marshy the buckthorn just grows anywhere although it does like marshy too but uh, where I get my buckthorn is on the side of a trail that's normally uh, trimmed back every few years. So it's you're going to trim it anyway. Anyway, I'll show you what I got later. I'm going to make some arrows. Yep, yep. I'm going to be making some bows and arrows. I got stuff from two years ago. Uh, so what I can do is the is the entire process of making arrows. I can do the cutting it green, shaving it down green, and then work on it when it's already seasoned. Yeah, all in the same video, so I don't have to wait two years or a year, whatever it is, between the the green and the seasoned. Yes, yes. 
What happened to this? This had some internal damage during the heat treat. I, I saw a crack. It was weird. Sometimes I can't tell if I install these cracks or, or what's going on. Uh, the only drawback to napping late at night is I'm, I'm tired by this time of day. So I might just mess up where I shouldn't be messing up. Yep. So you never know. That could have been a my mess up. I didn't even know. Inch steel rod. Yeah, I get from I get these from Home Depot. Twelve inches long. I cut them down to twelve inches long. Okay, but this is probably now eleven inches because I've been sharpening and you know wearing it down. I also have an eighth of an inch steel rod. No, quarter of an inch diameter steel rod. I don't know why I said eighth of an inch. Quarter inch diameter steel rod as well as this one. Don't tell me I need a band-aid already. I moved my band-aids. Just put the glove back on. I hate using the glove because it's too bulky for these little bitty arrowheads. Hold on. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I'm not going to stop the video. No. Just hold on. It's annoying, but I gotta do it. Yeah, this will. The bandit also prevents further cuts in the same spot because I usually get more than one cut in the same spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I moved my band-aids, but I didn't move them too far. I kind of put everything up on shelves. Except for my rocks. They're down on the floor. They don't like putting my rocks up on shelves because they're too heavy. Although the shelving probably can handle it. I still don't like doing it. Little boxes of rocks that I got for my projects coming up. I tried to organize my rocks into little boxes for the, these different projects and rock challenges. This one is just a filler for today. I don't. I didn't want to go into my rock challenges shelf yet. I got to think about them, and I've got some unopened mail. I gotta open some boxes that I got in the mail from some generous subscribers. Yeah, haven't done that yet. So, it's already Friday, it's already Saturday. Yeah, it's gonna be Saturday soon here. It's almost midnight, yeah, almost midnight. What am I going to do? Yeah, I start out kind of cruddy and then start thinning. Yeah. I kind of try to judge. I try to judge how the stone's going to react to the flaker. Get it to a reasonable shape and then I can start thinning it. Hmm. It's not a very good shape. Okay, come on. I'm losing energy somewhere. I think it's because I'm not holding it stiff enough. 
It's starting, starting to annoy me. The way it's the terminations are going, it's starting to annoy me a little bit. See how it scoops it also? And the terminations are not clean. Yeah, I might have overheated it. I'm using the coarse abrader because it's quick, but it doesn't put a very good edge on it for striking because it's all kind of jaggedy. You need solid contact, that's why you use a smoother, uh, less coarse abrader because you get more solid contact on that smoother edge. Some people asked me before, what's the difference? Why do you use a coarse or fine stone the course eats through the edge quickly it's very nice as far as speed goes but the finer grit will put more of a smooth edge on it which makes better contact with the tool now I, I didn't usually say that in the past I just said it just seems to work better but I've been thinking about it for a long time and I think it's because it allows better contact with the flaker with the uh, uh, finer grit, it makes a smoother edge that makes better contact with the flaker. Yep, and you can remove flakes without as much force. Because if it's all kind of lumpy from the coarse abrader, it's got to kind of crush through some of the lumps before it makes solid contact and you lose energy. I've got my high power glasses on. It's bad for my posture. Yep. I'm crouched way over, but it I can see so much better. Yeah. Maybe because my other glasses are scratched up too. You might say, yeah, you can see better, but it's all crooked. It doesn't look like stuff you normally do. Yeah. I'm probably more careful usually, but I haven't napped in like, what is it, four days? Yeah, if I go like two days, I forget how to nap. Gotta relearn it all, all over again. Not from scratch. Do you know what I mean? I lose all my tweaks. I gotta retweak my technique. Yeah. You lose all your little subtle tweaks and tricks when you don't nap for a couple days. At least with me, anyway. See that square edge is bugging me. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Just attack it without, trying, without crushing the edge too much. You gotta be careful to not to crush the edge a lot when I hit real hard. So it runs the risk of installing incipient cracks and crunching it and making all kinds of weird flakes. Well, yeah, I spent a long time looking up uh, Abenaki Indian artifacts today. That's what the local Indian tribes were during European contact and, you know, previous to that too. But I'm trying to find sources on the Abenaki bow and arrows. And if anyone knows any good sources on that, just put them in the comment section.
doesn't seem to be very many good sources for Abenaki weapons. And the uh, American Museum of Natural History site it has some maintenance stuff going on, so I couldn't look on that site. That's usually pretty good for artifacts, and it gives you a scale next to the artifact so that you can do a reproduction. As far as the arrows and the bows, it'll, it has a scale or a little measuring reference. Anyway, that's where I get a lot of my information. American Museum Natu of Natural History has a very good website. Usually, it was not available today or I'm just not looking on the right in the right spot. Anyways, why do I want to look up Abenaki weapons? Well, sometimes it's cool to do some stuff for museums every now and then. To break, break up the monotony. You do a museum exhibit or something. I was thinking of doing, trying to do a museum exhibit type stuff. But... I got so many other things on my plate that I don't know. Sometimes this museum stuff or the museum stuff pays well. Yeah. If they have university funding or something also, easy peasy. Easy peasy to get paid, usually. If you're into that sort of thing, which I am now. Yeah, I'm always looking for little, little ways to do little side side hustles in flint napping yeah there's flint napping side hustles yeah I gotta get it get in with the times or get with the times it's starting to look a little better but not too much it's still bugging me I gotta take my jacket off and it's only 55 degrees in here and I'm burning up. Yeah. You don't believe me that I go through a sweat stage. Some people think maybe I'm kidding. No. I'm not kidding. I start sweating if it starts to bug me. Or if it gets tense. Or intense. This is still not as nerve-wracking as the big points. No, no. Yeah, the big points are nerve-wracking. Because you spend all this time getting the big material. You go through all your contacts, pull all your strings, get the material, get some big stones, and then you get all excited, and you hit it once, hit it twice, Three times, crack, right down the middle, right in half. Yeah, all that time, wasted, wasted. Yeah. All that time getting the material, wasted. But if you break one of these little ones, I got a bunch of material for these little ones. There's, there's no stress as far as that goes. Break it? Oh, well. I got like 10 more pieces to replace it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Let's use the copper. 
Why? It's the first thing I picked up. Yep. I usually use 16 penny nail in there. Right now this is a grounding wire. I don't know what size. It's just a, it's similar to 1 8th. Similar to a 16 penny nail in size. It's not exactly 1 8th of an inch diameter. And I actually got some 40 penny nails. Yeah, I picked them up at the hardware store. It was surprising me. I thought the hardware store here was going to be lame. Hold on. Okay, what is this? This is a 16 penny box nail, you know, shiny, not galvanized box nail. This is what I usually use for my tips of my flakers, you know. Just a normal flaker. But this is a 40 penny. 40. 40 penny. This is 16. So 16 D and 40 D. I didn't measure the uh, my calipers. Let's see. I know I put them up here. Why they do why they do 40 D for 40 penny? I don't know. They don't know how to write a letter P. I'm sure some of you guys know why. I don't know why. But just in case people don't understand the English, this is 40. No, let me do this. So it looks right. Can you see? 40D. You go to the hardware store, you say, I want 40D uh, nails. Bright, shiny, 40D nails. You mean 16D? No, 40D. And don't be lame. What are you going to use them for? None of your beeswax. It's embarrassing. Just leave me alone. Yeah. You don't ask the autistic person what you want these things for. No. Anyway, the this okay calipers. Hopefully, it's close to a quarter inch. Yeah, it's not. It's a between three sixteenths and a quarter inch. Okay, so yeah, uh, you can probably find a drill bit that fits that. Yeah, just shy of a quarter inch. Uh, anyway, this will work as an indirect percussion tool. Uh, you, no, you put it in a wood handle and you stick the wood handle under your knee and then you can hit the metal part up here. And I'll be doing that. I'll be doing indirect percussion notch work and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. What did, what did Spaz do with the items? Here they are. Anyway. So yeah, my hardware store around here was not lame. I don't know what the quarter inch would be, a 50D penny, a 50D nail. 50 penny nail, I don't think they have those. Anyway, close enough, 40D is close enough. I like it. I like it because nail steel has this property that makes it bouncy and not too flexible bouncy but not too flexible hard but not too hard it's it grabs the edge not as good as copper but it's still pretty good and it is so cheap to make your tool tool tips from nails yeah cheap cheap Yeah, I bought these 40D nails by the pound. And I think I bought a half a pound. You know, I think it was like three bucks or something. I don't know. Barely noticed it. I, it was so cheap I forgot. Anyway, the 
penny nails are even cheaper. That's my standby for everything. And especially with these smaller points. And here I am using copper. Yeah. I gotta wear it down. It's lonely over there. It wants to get into the action. Yeah. I don't want to steal this. Don't want to steal to steal the limelight. The steel is stealing it. What am I going to do? Leave it thick. Yeah. Why thin it when it's not necessary? I could just stop right there. Stick it on an arrow and it'd be perfect. Why they went further than that? It's because they had a special intent that required fancy flaking. What special intent, you might ask? To be used against your enemies. That's, that's my final answer. I've been thinking about that for years. If you go over and above what's necessary to kill, to put food on the table, kill an animal, if you go over and above that, you're not using it for hunting. It's got to be something else. And it's probably not so you can pay for something. Because I don't these were used as currency sometimes, but not all, all the time. It had to be because you wanted to use these against your enemy and, and to cause as much pain and suffering as possible. Yeah. And you don't want these to be shot back at you, so you make them delicate so they'll break when they sh when you shoot them. So they won't be shot back at you. Yeah. Nothing more frustrating than a kill by an arrow that you shot at someone else. I can't even imagine what that would be like. Where is this thing? Yeah, it's terrible. I should wear a glove for this operation because when you put, put a lot of pressure it's bad for it you take a lot of risk it's, it's bad for your uh, your pad hand someone I think called this like a bean bag this is a piece of leather on a piece of wood right I guess it looks like a little bean bag or something anyway I hope that I think that's what he said Anyway, this is leather on wood. This is poplar wood you get at the hardware store. And this is leather you can order from leather you can order from eBay. Or from my friend Sean Dalgetty at Tundra Leather. That's where I got this. So if you want to know exactly where I got it, I got it from Sean. Yeah, he cut them the size for me and everything. Slick operation. I need a slick operation. I don't have a slick operation. I got low tech. Low tech everything. You know what? Doing heavy pressure is lame. I hate to say it, but heavy pressure is lame. Yeah. I don't like doing it. Even though I can do it now. My wrist is my wrist has recovered. 90%. I'm almost 100%. For years, my wrist was really, really bugging me. But now, almost, almost there. All right, what do I do? I can do heavy pressure now, and it doesn't bother my wrist. Unless I do it all day. And then, yeah, it starts to bug me, so... Very soon I can probably nap all day without it bugging me. Not that I want to do that all the time, but sometimes I just need to. I need to get something done. I need to nap all day to get it done. And it's coming up. I got some projects that are going to be 
that are going to require me to nap all day long, which is okay, as long as I can do it without sacrificing my health. And if I'm strong enough and recovered, I can do it. Yeah. Anyways, see how much better this is than heavy pressure? You can't see, I mean you can't you can't tell. It just looks like the same old same old. <coughs> Believe me, it makes a big difference. You don't have to be using that pressure flaker in that confined position over and over and over again. The small range of motion over and over. takes its toll especially if you're trying to pace yourself and you got really delicate work I have delicate work coming up on this if I don't want to tire myself out I've got to either take a break in the middle of it and come back and lose the tweaks yeah you can even lose a tweak after an hour of not doing it I want to take a break an hour break come back and Snap it in half because you lost your tweak. Yeah. I had it tweaked perfectly. It was going really well, but I took an hour break and I lost my tweak. You'll learn eventually, the new guys, that napping is all about that fine tweaking of the, the elements, of the initial conditions. And the force is required. You tweak it. Ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. That's why you got to do it over and over and over and over. Until you get different results. Because it's just ever so slightly different. That very subtle difference can make all the difference. And it's all about tweaking the skill. Yep. So you don't want to mess with the tweaks while you're doing this. I can do a regular pattern, see that? Why don't I do it all the time? You guys that, that have been watching the channel, why don't I do it? That's right, because it drives me nuts. I don't find pleasure in doing that. I mean, I think it looks cool after, but the journey is like climbing uphill in a rainstorm on a trail full of mud. It's just... I don't know. I don't know what it is. The harder I try, the, the worse it gets. Yeah, if I try to do regular pattern flaking all the time, it just gets, it gets on my nerves. Yeah, I don't know why, okay? Now, did they have that problem back in the day? Well, if we're the same now as we were back then, yes, they did. At least some of the nappers were, you know, bugged by... The monotony of pattern flaking. Let's see, what am I doing? I'm looking for an opportunity to thin without breaking it. I gotta take into account that this is a heat treat. I don't know the limits of it because this is the first. The first of this particular type, although I don't think I have any more of this, everything is a slightly different. So once you get used to one piece, um, it's pretty much for that one piece. What am I looking for? I lost my Ishi stick. 
that I was using for heavy pressure. Oh, okay. I need to have... Oh, I know. See, I used to arrange my stuff out front. Not, I put them behind me. Uh, I arranged them out front until I started dropping stuff. I dropped my work pieces on my tools. Yeah. There's nothing more frustrating than drop a work piece on something that you could have prevented from being there. Like, like I can prevent my tools from being out front. So I don't drop my work onto them. So that's what I did. But now, it's like a wild goose chase sometimes. I always complain about that. It's not a good video unless I complain about it. Yep. Yeah. This is not heavy pressure, by the way. This is just minimal right now. I did the heavy stuff already with uh, the indirect percussion. Now, did they use indirect percussion back in the day to do this regular pattern? I don't know. You tell me. You tell me. Uh, I don't know. You're going to say, I don't know. And you, know you know what I'm going to say? Exactly. We don't know. But if you see one person doing it, it is a possibility. It is a possibility. And yes, I do, I do use antler for indirect percussion on these small points. I have videos on this channel where I use natural materials and use indirect percussion on these small points with antler. You just need to look for them. You need to look for the ABO videos on this channel. Way back in the day. You're going to have to reach way back eight, eight years ago or something like that. So what am I doing right now? This is a stage where I call it regularizing. Where I go and I trim it back to see what I've got. Get some lumps off the edge. Nasty lumps. These lumps are nasty. These are not the these are not the good lumps. Nope. mess up the pattern yeah I'm gonna mess up the pattern because you know why I don't care this is not for pattern this is for thinness and delicate work pressure flaking guys you're, you're gonna notice that I just um, I don't know I don't care too much about being exact with the pressure either I'm careless with the pressure I'm careless with the indirect percussion until it gets down to the nitty-gritty And when I really need to focus, then I'll focus a lot. All right, here goes. It's uh, it's like 58 degrees in here, and it feels like 158 because I'm hitting the base. It could snap in half at any time. 
but I gotta do it. I hate to hit the base, but it's gotta be done to thin it down. Yep, it's the law of the West. <laughs> I don't know why I got on that particular thing. I don't know why. It's not like I watched that cartoon. I did look it up though, just so I could see. Where it came from. I just remember from my childhood. Watching cartoons every Saturday. I never missed my cartoons. Unless I went over one of my friends' house. I went over my friend's house. Robert. His name was Robert. He always used to watch Creature Double Feature. What about the cartoons, dude? Yeah, those are those are not good. I want to watch Creature Double Feature. So we would watch Creature Double Feature. Most of the cartoons were, were over anyway. They were over by 10 a.m. in many cases. Back in the day, it switched over to more an older audience. Look at that. I forget that too. I need to tweak my fingernails back more because I chip them. I forgot. And you thought I just liked really short fingernails. Well, I do, yes. But it's, that's not the only reason. There's a practical advantage. I hate long fingernails on anybody. But there's a practical advantage when you're doing stuff like this. Yeah, it's a switch stage. The copper was... I, I like the copper better for these. Oops. See, I'm, I'm putting all my stuff back down on the floor again like I used to. Yeah, because the shelves are too far away. I gotta reach too far. Even though they look nice up on the shelf. The tools are too far away. Besides, back in the day, they didn't have shelves. Nope. The neppers had one bag for the tools. And they, they couldn't be too heavy because he had to walk miles and miles and miles to do anything. Yeah, after a while, you exhaust all the resources in your area. And you got to walk miles to get to the resources. Unless you're traveling every week. You still got to walk a ton. You don't want to carry a bunch of kit. Back in the day. So... If you want to know how they did it back in the day, they probably did it with a very compact toolkit. Yeah. If you're in a big old fancy shop with a hundred different tools, you're not doing it like they did back in the day. I guarantee that. And I've been thinking about the more and more I study flint napping in general, the more I'm convinced that flint napping was done by a small group, not by everybody. Yeah. And there are various reasons for that. Uh, one is just the basic physical demands. The eyesight thing. Uh, to get delicate points made, you've got to have good eyesight. And that's for young people. Young people have the good eyesight. 
Yeah. And uh, that, that limits the number of people doing it, for one, because the older guys, if they don't have good eyesight, they're not able to do the nice points or sharpen the edges well. So you're cutting down the pool of eligible humans for napping just because you need good eyesight. So that's one thing. Another thing is accidents. You know, if you flint nap long enough, you're going to have a serious accident. I've had I have a couple serious accidents that if I we didn't have antibiotics or quick uh, first aid stuff. If it was back in the day, I, I might have had a serious infection. Maybe even got my hand am amputated. Yeah. So there's that. And then you go fight. You lose nappers in the fights. How long does it take to recover skill in napping? If you lose all your nappers in a fight. Oh, it takes years. Sometimes decades. To get back up to the skill level you had before in the tribe. So I think it was a small group of people making most of the points. And those that small group of people was, were... Uh, consciously avoiding all the other things in life that could interfere with the flint napping and just focus on the flint napping. That way they could be more efficient and get it done. Yeah. Anyway. We shall see. But yeah, the more I do research, the more I'm thinking there really wasn't that many people doing the napping. At least not the really good napping. As far as skill, high level of skill, probably very few. See, I'm hitting the pad with this. It's, it's not reaching well, so you got a longer tip. That's better. So I'm regularizing still. Yeah, I gotta make the contour of the surface nice and smooth if I want to do another another pass I might not <clears throat> I might not do another pass over this one but if I want to get it thinner I got to do another pass I think I can go a little bit thinner Too much pressure on it. Too much pressure and I snap them. It's a domed pad too, so I'm able to put pressure without snapping the ends. I mean snapping it with uh, by bridging the ends. It's it's domed slightly, which means I can put more pressure on there without snapping this. Yeah. Yep. Oh, come on. That's if I don't get premature flakeration. Oh, come on. I know you can seat. There it goes. A little bit too much seat. All right. See, you're doing good up here. Sometimes a stone is funny. It's inconsistent. In other words, you can't always depend on it.
If you're new, you're not going to know if it's you or the stone. I'm just letting you know. Sometimes the stone is inconsistent and the things you did before are not going to work. The things that you were successful at doing before are not going to work. If the stone is not cooperating. In that spot. You see what I did there to clear off that step fracture? No, you missed it. Got to rewind it. A lot of times if I talk about it, I jinx myself and I don't I don't do it. I stay with a stupid little step fracture. Anyway, I was talking a lot about luck lately in flint napping. Yep, there is a lot of luck involved. If you, if you uh, are that kind of napper. Some nappers, they don't take a lot of chances. So, and you can see it in the, in the work. It's... Uh, Pieces are more chunky. Flaking is more regular. The edges are straighter. It, that means the guy is not taking any chances. A guy that takes chances, you're going to get wonky. Unstraight edge. It's going to be thinner, but it's going to be a little more chaotic. thinner do I want to go thinner I do want to mm. I have to make it more narrow I hate when I do that Where's the file? That's what I should be using. Oh, I found my flat file. I don't like it though. I'm going to use it in a, as last resort. I like the round one better. Why? Because I can turn it as I'm filing. See? I turn it. It doesn't get all full of like debris. Come on. I don't want big flakes, just little ones. I'm just going to thin it. That's it. I think major. No big deal. I'm talking to the rock. Just telling it. It's no big deal. It doesn't need to put up a fight. It's not listening. You might say that I can't hear in you. Yeah, well. Says who? Hmm? You never know. I am kidding. I 
just saw, I keep seeing these things on the internet. I, I'm guilty of, of uh, swiping through and looking at all kinds of science stuff. Whenever I'm on a kick to look at science things, I just uh, swipe, swipe, swipe. The uh, the algorithm picks up what I'm doing and it, it puts up a bunch of science stuff. Anyway, it keeps coming up that people believe that just by observing a phenomenon you're creating, you're creating an effect just by observing. Just the the the, uh, the act of acknowledging that its existence causes it to change. Yeah. That's not what's happening. Ob observing something, when you uh, hear that, and uh, with a, when a real scientist says, when you observe something, you're causing the observed thing to change. It's because the observations are actually interactions. They're not simply an acknowledgement of the existence of the thing. You're interacting with the thing when you're doing the observation. That's what they mean. When a scientist says he's observing something, he's not acknowledging its existence because he already knows it's there. What he's doing is he's interacting with it to get some kind of measurement or property or something like that. So yeah, you're going to you're going to cause it to change. What people mis misinterpret that and say to themselves, I can affect it just by looking at it. Yeah. It knows I'm looking at it. And it, it makes a change. It knows. <laughs> yeah, that's what they think. They're thinking wrong because they're nuts. People are nuts. Where's my... Some people, not everybody. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm trying to do too much with too little. When I get step fractures like that, what I'm trying to do is, um, first of all, the edge is not lowered enough for me to do what I'm doing. Second of all, it's, it's getting thick because I, I got it narrow without thinning it. And third, I'm getting impatient. I wanted to see if I could go thinner and it's not working that well. It is a heat treat. It's easy to nap, but it's still kind of tough. So I'm thinking, that'll be easy just to shoot a flake across. No, not so easy. And even with the, a tremendously good file, I messed it up. I went across the tip. I'm using my spatula tool this time. Uh, that's not working. I just took more of the tip off. Okay. Why am I going through this? Because I crunched the edge right there. I crunched it. It's crunchy right there. I can't get that out of there. You know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about? Look how crunchy that edge is. It was nice a little while ago. Until I decided I need to go thinner. Just to see if I can do it. Then I forgot. Sometimes you're just fighting against nature. Cannot mess. You cannot. What was the old saying? The old commercial. Do not. Don't mess with Mother Nature or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to do too much.
not working because I'm bumping up against the stupid pad all righty Yeah, bumping up against the pad can mess up the whole thing. It messes with the tweak. You don't see it in the video. It's one thing that the video can't show you is if those little secondary interferences I don't know what else to call it. What am I doing? I'm going to get some symmetry on this point, so I need to take some off the other side. Come on, I sharpened the steel just for this and it's still not working. Anyway, I'm trying to get it thinner than it was before. The ratio, I'm trying to improve the ratio with the thickness ratio and it's not working. If I lose the tip, which I did twice, the very tip, it messes with the width the thickness ratio. very significantly yeah no nope, not like that yeah like that did it get thinner it's starting to ah. okay Right there. Are we there yet? I just like messing with the tips. Yeah. Not done yet, hold on. I gotta run down the edge a little bit. Make a pass. I gotta make a pass down the edge. Why? Putting those little bitty serration looking things in there. 
and straight, straightening it out. Man, that space heater's been going consistently. The temperature outside must be dropping fast. I was hoping it would get quiet. That way I can be less distracted. And yeah, that space heater sound does distract me a little bit. Especially when it's, I'm not flaking like I should be. If it starts getting on my nerves, if the stone gets on my nerves, everything else starts getting on my nerves. For, you know, are you guys experiencing that same thing? No? I got too many problems? Yeah. Yeah. My kids say that all the time. Yep. Too many problems. <laughs> Just leave it like that. Why make it more complicated? I don't know. I don't know. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna make it more complicated. He treats so nice. Where is it? There it is. On this side. Not supposed to be on that side. That's why I don't keep them on the floor. Do I ever do that narrow entry notch thing? Once in a while I do, yes. When I'm feeling particularly dumb. Because <laughs> it usually doesn't work out. And you know, if I didn't have to worry about the time, yeah, I could do more narrow entry notch stuff and uh, you know do the vertical punch work instead of trying to maneuver within the notch I could do the vertical punching or the vertical pressure it doesn't even have to be punch work it could be pressure work vertically but I'd, I like working through the notch better I don't know why. Maybe it is a little bit more risky, I think, but it's less. Uh, un, it's it's more predictable. It's less of a risk for me. Yeah, even though I could blow away the sides. For some reason, if I use pressure from the top, I end up messing it up somehow. Maybe I take it for granted that it's going to work well, and it doesn't. I don't know, should I go further? See the, the width of my tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not good. It's 
gotta be thin enough that I don't have to risk it too much. But it can't be so thin that it'll bend. Same thing with antler. How they do it back in the day when, with such small entry notches, they just used, they started with a thin uh, workpiece for one, and then they used a very tough piece of antler and thinned it way down. Or bone, use a tough piece of bone. Uh oh. I'm feeling like I'm crushing that. Yep. Dang it. Hold on. I wanted a nice pop out, but they gave me a, a crooked pop out. A crunchy pop out. Still kind of crunchy. It made me lose some off the off the opening too. Anyway, that's as far as my skill level will take me. I gotta do a bunch more to get better at that. And uh, yeah, I can go skinnier or thinner on this too. Yeah. Yeah, it'll work.
Yeah, I'm gonna leave it. I'm not gonna push my luck. Okay.
Yeah, I'm just messing with just just to mess with it. I'm not, it doesn't really matter. I mean, little step fractures like that, they don't matter all that much. But if I can get them out, it looks a little bit better. This was just a lump that I, I didn't like. Yeah, I'll mess with it a little bit longer. Anyways, yeah, with these, you can obsess over them. I can obsess over them for a long time. I'm just killing time. We're, we, we're there. We were there a little while ago. Yeah. I do want to still see if I can run a flake into that area. Just for grins and giggles. I should be able to. I don't see why not. Yeah, I can run it in there, but it just doesn't do what I want it to do. metal marks in there mm -hmm. oh well it's not doing it it's very very stubborn It's because I'm not taking any aggressive actions against it. It's just very subtle. Besides, if I go after it too much, I'm going to put a curve in it. I don't want to put a curve in it. Did they obsess about it like this back in the day? I don't think so. They did they didn't have time. In my opinion, they didn't have time to mess with it like this. I'm just I just like to mess with it. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta admit, sometimes I just like to mess with it.
There we go. There's a couple things on there that I didn't like. So that's it. I'll live with that little step fracture in the middle there. That little island. Yeah. It's all right. And there's a little island right there too or whatever. Yeah, I don't want to take chances on going thinner than that. It's not that thin, actually. Besides, I just dropped it. If it was thinner, the, top, the tip probably would have popped off. Yeah, it, it looks like I did it in 20 minutes, but it took me an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, I like I like this style. I don't know where it's from, but I like the style. I forget where these are from. This little instead of putting a notch like the like the side notches into the bottom, you just kind of curve it inward. It's like a fishtail, right? Okay. There you go. That's it. 